Unlike just three or four years ago, there are now numerous mini LED monitors on the market to choose from. The difficult part is doing just that, choosing one. In this video, I'll be pitting the ASUS PG32 UQX against the Samsung Odyssey Neo G8 to provide insight into how two monitors can have such similar specs yet perform so differently. Both of these displays utilize mini LED backlights with similar zone counts, 1152 for the ASUS and 1196 for the Samsung. The main difference outside of the Samsung's aggressive curve is that it's using a VA panel which gives it a significant native contrast advantage over the ASUS's IPS panel. This combination of VA panel and mini LED backlight enables Samsung to achieve an exceptionally high contrast ratio. Many reviewers regard it as the top 32-inch mini LED monitor due to this impressive measured performance. On paper, the ASUS has no chance. Let's see how Samsung's contrast advantage manifests in the real world. Bottom line is, it doesn't. This essentially sums up the two monitors' local dimming implementations, which really drives home the fact that you can't judge a display's performance on measurements alone anymore. Many take for granted that the ASUS is leveraging its hardware G-Sync module to not only handle VRR and its variable overdrive tuning, but more importantly, it's also managing the local dimming algorithm. In this case, it has more computational grunt to analyze the signal and relay that to the backlight to react accordingly. As a result, it's not only more precise in analyzing what and where to dim and illuminate, but it does so faster than the Samsung. It's one of the main reasons why I personally think that this test that's commonly used to judge how effective a mini LED monitor's local dimming behaves is not very informative. Great if your only metric of value is zone transition speed, but that is just a single characteristic of local dimming. Given how advanced local dimming algorithms have become, I believe using real content to judge performance is the way to go. If I were going strictly off of that test there, I tell you that the Samsung edges out the ASUS. That completely reverses an actual content though as you can see here, where the Samsung's flickering zone transitions are super obvious to the eye, while the ASUS is far more controlled and subtle. This is repeatable across every game I've tested. This brings me to the next point, which is manufacturers gaming the review and measurement system. The Neo G8 was and still is advertised as an HDR2000 capable monitor. So that was a fucking lie. In reality, it's nowhere near capable of 2000 nits in real content. At launch, some reviewers measured it hitting 2000 nits, but only on a 10% test slide, where the monitor was effectively cheating by detecting the test condition and temporarily boosting brightness. In actual content at launch, I could never get it to display even 1000 nits, which remains the same for this late 2023 manufacturing unit that I have on hand. The point here is that the way many of these mini LED monitors behave in tests is vastly different from how they behave in content. In this case, the Neo G8 is the polar opposite of the ASUS PG32 UQX. Samsung claims 2000 nits and supposedly achieves that in test conditions, but for most 10% size highlights in real content, it barely cracks 550 nits as its local dimming algorithm is so desperate to minimize bloom. Meanwhile, the ASUS underpromises and overdelivers by marketing it as HDR 1400, but regularly hitting over 1600 nits in actual content. The gist of it is that the ASUS gives you the content as intended at the expense of Bloom, while Samsung is giving you the anti-Bloom focus group testing flavor that their engineers think consumers want. Oversaturated color, black crush, dim highlights, and general wonky behavior that is never consistent. Manufacturers are tuning these displays local dimming performance however they think is ideal, and that can vary wildly from one monitor to the other. As I've demonstrated, mini LED monitors are not created equal. It's literally the wild west when it comes to this area of the monitor market, with zone count not at all indicative of a monitor's performance. What's far more important is the backlight implementation itself and local dimming algorithm. Many continue to clamor for 10,000 and 50,000 plus zone monitors, but what's the point if you can't effectively control that huge zone count? 
when it comes to gaming monitors, considerations like input lag, pixel response, and local dimming speed all take priority and require a holistic tuning approach to optimize. Getting that accomplished at the high refresh rates gamers demand today is an expensive R&D effort on both the hardware and software side, which may be why development on the mini-LED front has stalled a bit. A little tidbit you might not know is that both the Samsung Neo G8 and Asus PG32UQX have four times the actual mini-LED zones, but consolidate every cluster of four LEDs into one. You can infer why from what I just discussed. Also, Please don't interpret this video as me hating on the Samsung Neo G8. My scrutiny of it is from the perspective of disappointment because it has everything necessary to make an amazing HDR gaming display, but Samsung fumbles it with really poor choices. I hope we see further development in SoCs with more compute to drive advanced backlights in the monitor space, but for now, the PG32 UQX in my opinion retains its title as king of HDR gaming monitors but I still have a couple more monitors to test to have potential to dethrone it. Namely the LG 27 gr 95 un and Red Magic GM001S. I've left some Amazon affiliate links below that with your help will allow me the privilege of purchasing more monitors for comparison and a better camera so I can shoot these videos in HDR. I try to answer every question I can in the comments, so if you have any, please feel free to ask. Thank you for watching.